Well, hello once again, and welcome to another episode of Inside IUE Sports. I'm your host, Caleb Gillock, and today we're going to be talking about tennis as the spring season just around the corner. Talk a little bit about that. Joining me today to talk about it is head coach Erskine Ratchford. Coach, thanks for joining me today. It's great to be back again, another season. Right. Well, uh, let's start off today by talking about the women's team, okay. and uh, just tell us a little bit about the fall season leading into the spring season. Uh, the fall season for the women's team was a really strong season. Uh, they finished up 6-1. and one. Uh, The season had some tough matches, some tough teams. We wanted to play strong, competitive groups, and we did. Uh, they performed well. Uh, they did good against their matches, a level of play, you know, beginning of the season versus where they finished up at the end, had climbed. So to me, it's a good barometer of us going into the spring season. Uh, one of the big matches that I really enjoyed seeing was our uh, women's team beating Cedarville. Mm -hmm. That's a tough team, very competitive, and uh, we had to be mentally tough to do that. And uh, all the ladies performed well, helped deliver points to get us over that key win. So uh, very excited and, uh, about that particular win and again getting set up for the fall here. I mean spring, excuse me, the spring. Usually, from what I understand, the spring season is more geared toward conference play, which you've got some high goals for the team this spring, right? Uh, we do, both for the men's and women's teams. Uh, we've done well in the fall. Uh, we've been building our program, getting stronger players. Uh, we've been in the top part of the conference. Uh, that's been nice. It's been good. It's a nice place to be at, but we want to go beyond that. And so our goals are to get to the finals, both for the men's and women's conferences, and to compete for that winning of the conference. That gets you on to the nationals. Mm -hmm. That's where we want to go. Uh, to help facilitate that, we've got to play tough teams. So this schedule, both for the women and the men in the spring, are going to be tough. But uh, again, our two leading competitors in our conference, be Asbury and IU Southeast, uh, they play at a high level. We need to be there and beyond to beat them. So to help get us comfortable with that type of competitive environment, we're going to play some tough matches from the very beginning of the season. And, uh, but I think we're up for that challenge. It's what we need. And you have to immerse yourself in that kind of environment mm -hmm. so that you are com you know, comfortable there. Sure. All right, well, let's go ahead and talk about the players you've got to get you there. Let's start off by talking about the juniors and tell us about the twins, Sarah and Rebecca Lockhart. Uh, Sarah and Rebecca have been playing. They've developed their skills. Uh, their big improvements now are their groundies, particularly the forehand, and they've really worked on their serve, and both of them can now really hit some strong serves. So uh, those type of uh, weapons they now have and their ability to volley are going to be uh, strong assets, particularly in the area of doubles. Uh, doubles is a key component of the matches, how you, mm -hmm. how you come out of your doubles, which is the first part of the match, go a long way to determine whether you're going to win the overall match. So I'm looking for those skill sets and doubles, and uh, they certainly are doing well there. All right. On to the sophomores. Tell us about Morgan Jackson. Uh, Morgan uh, playing one force. She has developed her game. She's always had a lot of power, uh, variety in her shots. We've been working on consistency, building her serve up, uh, moving around the court, playing one. Uh, not only do you have to have the uh, high-powered shots to play at that level, but uh, mobility around the court is key in that. So we've been developing that for her. I look forward to do uh, very well this year. Uh, she recognizes those challenges and been working hard on them. So uh, I'm very proud of her progress. And how about Kaylin Venezia? Uh, Kaylin has uh, certainly been working hard too. She has been consistent in her game, uh, been a good mover around the court. The big area where we've been trying to work with her is developing increased power in her shots. Again, she's playing in the upper part of the uh, lineup. Uh, having powerful shots is a key element there. Uh, forehands in particular, we've built up for her. She has a great backhand, consistent, places it well, and just making her more aggressive in her play. So she's been working on that and doing a good job there. So uh, I feel very confident in her playing in that upper part of the lineup. And how about Brooklyn Hubbard? Uh, Brooklyn, uh, certainly playing well too. Uh, very mobile player, uh, has a good forehand, likes to play aggressively. 
Uh, we've been working on shot selection, you know, choosing the right shot at the right time uh, and moving her players around. So the combination of her mobility, her power, and now developing, placing the ball better, uh, I think is going to bode well for her, and, and she'll do well this year. And Bree Ayers? Uh, Bree is a model of consistency. Uh, she's like a backboard. She's quick. She moves well. She volleys well. So uh, her ability in playing doubles and in singles is a, a real asset to us, too. Uh, just a mentally strong player, doesn't let things bother or upset her. You put her out there and, and she's 100%. So, uh, again, another good asset for us. And again, the lineup for the women's team is, is fairly consistent from top to bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, that makes us a tough team to play because there really isn't a weak link in our lineup there. And how about Crystal Smith? Crystal, uh, she is the marathon player. <laughs> uh, players that play against her, you know, they now know just how tough she is to play. She gets to every ball, gets it back. Matches can go three, close to four hours at a time. So uh, she has the endurance and strength to go that distance. And a lot of her players that she plays against are just not up to something that just keeps coming at them. The ball mm -hmm. keeps coming back. So her consistency and level of play and just the tenaciousness of her uh, usually brings home points that we need to get a match. So, again, another good player for us. I was going to say, didn't she have a match last year that went close to four hours? Yeah, she did. Uh, it was phenomenal. Both players were getting leg cramps at the end, but she battled through them a little better. And uh, uh, her mother came over and said, that's the longest match I've ever seen her play. <laughs> and, you know, it was it was like almost 10 o'clock at night before we got off mm -hmm. the courts. But uh, I think it was a very satisfying win to put yourself in such a demanding match and come out the winner. She, uh, her confidence level drew from that. I personally haven't been around tennis a whole lot, and for the viewers that we have that haven't been either, how often is it you see matches that go three and four hours? That's usually a pretty rare event. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a couple hours, two and a half, or, you know, if it's, if it's a competitive match and, and players are uh, pretty evenly matched up against, you'll see two and a half, okay. maybe three hours. But once you go beyond three, heading to like four hours, uh, that's a whole new realm. And, right. uh, you know, there's no substitutes. You can't bring in somebody else. You can't sure. call a timeout. It's just continuous play. And uh, that really puts a, a real demand on your physical fitness. And uh, it speaks well for her. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, you've got a freshman on the team that shall be good. Tell us about her. Uh, Shelby's our newest uh, teammate. Uh, Shelby has done really well. She has uh, got a great record for the fall season, performed very well. She's quick around the court, really likes to hit her forehand strong, has a good serve. Uh, I see her level of play really picking up from the beginning to the end of the fall season. Definite improvement in her level of play. I expect that to continue in the spring, and we certainly will need it. She'll get mm -hmm. a chance to use all those improvements in the upcoming matches. All right. Aside from Shelby, who are some of the players you've seen the most improvement from this year? Oh, most improvement. You know, it's almost been an across-the-board uh, level of play increase of all. They play each other. They practice well. Uh, you know, we've been uh, doing a little bit of our spring season development now so watching them all in play I can't really say there's one player in particular that's most improved the whole group has improved and that's been good because the whole group has lifted their level of play and um, I'm excited to see them you know get into you know the matches coming right. up in spring what are your what does your schedule look like this spring uh, well uh, we've tentatively got a match schedule for this Sunday Lake Superior uh, for both the men and women, uh, the women Lake Superior team is a very strong team. So are the men's. Uh, we're coming right into the beginning of our season, playing some very tough competition. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, I think we're up for that challenge. You know, it's going to be good for us to have to deal with this type of play. So right off the bat, both teams, men and women, got a strong match with that 
group there. Uh, followed a few days later, we take off for spring break. We go uh, to Hilton Head. Okay. Um, the women and the men both have t you know tough teams lined up down there. It's, it's a concentrated uh, group of matches. Uh, we have, uh, well, I'm just looking at some of the teams here. Women have Montreat, Iowa Central, Concordia, Wisconsin. Uh, you know, there's a rating system for teams that's used universally by most everybody, and uh, their ratings are very high. So the women are going to have tough matches there. Uh, it's good there. It's good what they need. Uh, the same for the guys there. When we come back uh, from spring break, and you know, it's kind of getting us set up for conference there, these early matches are trying to make us tough and strong for that. Uh, Carlo, uh, then we go to IU Kokomo, then we go to Campbellsville, and Campbellsville is a nationally ranked team. Uh, their women's team is exceptional. You know, they're, they're a great team, but we're going to play that kind of caliber play mm -hmm. to help gear us up for the second half of this season, which is when we run into the stronger teams. Uh, Midway's got a good team. Uh, their women's team's pretty good. We'll have to play strong there. Ohio Christian. Then we hit our uh, big challenges, Asbury and Southeast, and we want to win those matches. Mm -hmm. uh, not only is it good for the record, but it also helps the seating procedure for the conference. And whoever comes out the best in that uh, season matches will get you know the priority on the seating. Right. So we want to win those matches, and all this preliminary or earlier matches are the keys for us to develop those uh, abilities to you know take these teams down. So right. that'll lead us into the conference. The conference this year is at the Western Southern facility, Mason, Ohio. So both the men and women will get to play where. Roger and Rafa and Venus and Serena play. Nice. Um, it's like being out there in, in the big world of tennis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're excited that the conference is going to be held at such a really nice facility. All right. And there you have it a little bit about the women's team. We'll take a quick break and be right back with more Inside IUE Sports. The leaders of First Bank Richmond encourage their employees to give their best effort towards serving the community. One organization very dear to many First Bank Richmond employees is the Third Grade Reading Academy. First Bank staff volunteers hundreds of hours and even hosts Academy students on site. Doing great things together stands for First Bank's commitment to continue doing all they can to make life better for their customers and our community. First Bank Richmond and you, doing great things together. What if a home phone could also be a smartphone? And what if that home phone could save you money on your home and wireless bill at the same time? With Xfinity Voice, you get amazing technology like readable voicemail on your smartphone, caller ID on your TV, and even text messaging, all for a low price. Start saving with unlimited nationwide talk and text and switch to Xfinity Voice for just $19.99 a month for 12 months. Call 1-800-XFINITY today. Almost done. Now you can pay your bill, manage your appointments, and check your connection status. Anytime, anywhere. Oh, so you're protesting? Okay. Introducing Xfinity My Account, available on any device. sometimes be chaotic and with small children it can be difficult to get to the doctor. Hi Mrs. Towns, how are you doing? I have a sick little boy right here. I think he might have an ear infection. With Reed Health Now virtual visits you don't even need to leave your home. I'll send in a prescription for him. Quick, easy, convenient. I don't want to take the kids out today. Oh hey doc. Reed Health, right beside you, right now.
And welcome back to Inside IUE Sports. We just finished talking about the women's season preview, so now it's time to talk about the men's tennis team. Coach Rant for joining me today. Coach, let's go ahead and start off by talking a bit about the fall season for the men's team. Okay, the past fall season was a good season for the men's team. Uh, they ended up with a nice winning record for the fall. Uh, four and one on the teams. The teams they played were very strong teams. Uh, some of the teams qualified for their national uh, sports association tournament, final tournament, and we did very well against them. Uh, best match I think I saw was quite a remarkable match. Uh, the men played the Franciscan University team, and uh, we ended up down 4-0 with five singles matches to go. And uh, that's about as far down as you can possibly get. <laughs> and uh, Franciscan is a strong team, a very tough team. And uh, the guys just dug in the remaining singles teams and one by one started bringing the points home and uh, got down to four all. Uh, Alex Shelley was the last one out there. And, all the pressures on him to bring home that W to get that final team win, and they pulled it out. And uh, it's remarkable to pull a win out when you're that far down. It's it's just you know a very rare event. Uh, it was just uh, it was wonderful to be able to witness that and right. see the guys really uh, enjoy coming back from like that. I hope we don't have to do that often because <laughs> boy, that's it's rough on the coach there. Right. But it was a great season. Uh, they played against some tough teams. I think that bodes well for us in the upcoming spring season. And uh, I'm looking forward to see how we uh, go forward in the spring. All right. Tell us a little bit about your outlook on the spring season. Uh, again, spring season, uh, both for the men and the women, what we're trying to achieve here is to get used to uh, playing at a higher level. We're trying to not only... Uh, be competitive, but we want to win just about everything we can, but we want to win against teams that are tough. Uh, the big reason for that is that we have two strong adversaries in our conference, and uh, Asbury and Southeast, and, and both are good teams. Right. Uh, winning the season and stuff is important, but uh, the goal is for us, both the men's and the women, is to get to the finals of the conference and compete to win that conference title. That's what gets you to the nationals. Mm -hmm. But first, you got to get to the finals. So, uh, want to have a good winning season. But when we get to the uh, end of the season, we go into our conference tournament. I want us to be match tough. Mm -hmm. And the only way to do that is to go through like running through the fire. Mm -hmm. And I've given both the men's and women a very challenging schedule. But uh, I think they're up for it. And I think it's going to make them even better. Both the men's and women's team improved their level of play through the fall. This certainly, the spring, will uh, require them to take their level of play to another level. They'll have okay. to go up more. But as the season concludes and we go into the conference tournament, we need to be at that high level so that we can take down these two teams. Uh, other matches they've got lined up. Uh, we, we've really uh, given the guys a good challenge, and they're probably going to beat me with a stick, but uh, we're taking on a Division I, NCAA Division I team, Wright State. Okay. And uh, it's a first for us, and uh, certainly D1 is tough. Sure. So uh, this will be the toughest of the tough batches, but it's kind of like a midpoint in the season. Mm. We're going to take what we learned from the match. It'll help... Uh, expose all the weaknesses. When you play somebody this good, you're going to find all the elements of your game that really need work on and what you do good, too, to help right. build that up, too. Uh, from that match and, and things we gained from that, we're going to work on things to help us finish up the season. Again, our goal is to get you know a good, strong conference record. We want to get a good seating position to help us in the conference tournament. And near the end of the season, uh, we'll have our... Uh, two teams, Asbury and uh, Southeast, to play. And uh, I, I want to come out of those good. I want us to take, right. you know, take it to them, uh, win you know, where we can. Certainly like to beat Southeast, always fun to beat <laughs> them, and uh, get ourselves a good position for the conference. All right. Well, let's go ahead and talk about your roster. Start off by telling us about the lone senior, Colton Shipley. Uh, Colton, uh, again, 
He's Mr. Forehand. He loves hitting forehands. He's built his game up. I think, you know, as you get stronger through your years of college, you know, he's physically stronger. The ball's coming off the racket harder. Uh, we've been working on developing other aspects of his game. He's changed from a two-handed backhand to a one-handed backhand, which is, you know, kind of most of the time players go from one to two, you know. But, right. So uh, he's worked on that. Uh, he's playing a good game of doubles, singles. You know, he'll certainly be an asset out there. Uh, he's a tough player to play. He's just mentally tough. He likes to compete, and he likes to battle out there. So uh, I'm looking forward to good things from him. And uh, it's hard to believe four years, you know, is zipped by, but right. it has. And, uh, you know, we'll hope to finish on a high note for him this season. All right. Moving on to the junior class, how about Hunter Wilson? Hunter. Uh, Hunter is another solid player. He is uh, Mr. Go-To. When you need to win a match, you know, you put him out there, Hunter is going to give you 110% out there. He's got uh, all-around game, good serve, consistent strokes, forehand's really solid, hits a great backhand, volley. You know, he's got all the shots, um, but he's got a tenacious desire to win, and uh, you know, he pushes himself to the max. You know, a lot of matches he's had uh, been hard matches where it's come down to almost a level of attrition because he's playing a tough player mm -hmm. and who has shots that are probably the equal of his. And so it just comes down who's going to, who wants to win it more. And right. uh, he does that well. So when I'm out there and seeing him out there, I, I know I'm getting 110% <laughs> out of that guy. Good. How about Keaton Akers? Keaton, uh, Keaton's another strong player. He's got firepower, uh, can really rip the ball. Uh, he's building his game up and, you know, playing strong too. Uh, both doubles and singles, you know, like to have him in there. He, you know, just a key asset to us. And uh, I, I enjoy seeing the shots that he can produce. He can really hit some nice shots there. So uh, another key element to our winning of matches and, you know, we're going to look forward to, you know, a good performance this spring by Keaton. And how about Alex Shelley? Um, Alex, uh, again, another solid, consistent player. Again, uh, to me, I guess, watching him under the pressure of that Franciscan match, knowing that the whole match rides on his winning that thing against a good player, uh, he delivered. And uh, I... I always remember just how that was because it was a nervous mm -hmm. thing. You know, was, both players were closely matched up, and it was just down to, again, who wants to win this? Who's going to put out the effort? And he did that. So, again, when he's out there, singles or doubles, you know, he's really performed well. And uh, when I have him out there, I count on him. You know, he's, right. he's one of my – I count on him to bring that W home. All right. You've got a sophomore attorney in Austin Gick. Tell us about him. Yeah, Austin. Uh, Austin's a strong player. He's got tremendous power. He really pops the ball. Uh, we've been working on developing consistency and shot selection. Uh, combine that with his ability to hit a big serve forehand. He can really hit the forehand. Him and Colton Plain are fun to watch because mm -hmm. it's who can hit the ball the hardest. and <laughs> The ball's going at a pretty high rate of speed. So, uh, again, we're working on that consistency there and, and look forward to seeing him play this you know, spring also. All right. Sophomore newcomers, uh, tell us about Pablo Munoz. Pablo uh, is playing one force, uh, a very strong player. Uh, got all the shots. Uh, he's got mobility and speed around the court. He can, again, hit powerfully. Got exceptional touch. Uh, and he, he's just got uh, a good sense of what type of shot to hit at the particular time to cause you the most aggravation. <laughs> and uh, he came oh so close to beating Asbury's number one player. Got down to the tiebreaker in the third set, super tiebreaker. And uh, prior to that time, nobody's been able to even push or do anything. So Asbury coach was out there. It's the first time I've seen him nervous. He was really <laughs> pacing the floor, and I thought that was a good sign. Um, I think Pablo has the capability of beating Asbury's one, or for that matter, Southeast one. You know, he's mm -hmm. got that kind of level of play, and uh, very proud of what he's achieved, and, and just how, how strong a player he is. And how about uh, Max Fondes? 
Max is right there too. Uh, he's uh, playing two for us right now. Uh, Max is strong, really strong guy. He's played well in the fall, got all the shots, phenomenal uh, forehand, good serve. But, you know, we've been working on a program uh, for conditioning. It's kind of a neat program called Volt Conditioning. And it, it's uh, a national type program that uh, you tell it what type of sport you're working on. And uh, it develops the conditioning and strength training that's specific to your sport. So all our players are using it. Uh, Max has gotten actually bigger and stronger. You know, I was walking, both him and Pablo are, are big, strong guys. I mean, I was walking behind them and they've gotten bigger and stronger. I've had to get bigger sweatshirts for them and shirts <laughs> because they've grown out of the shirts mm. they have. They've actually gotten bigger and stronger, but it hasn't hurt their mobility or quickness. They're just hitting the ball harder and bigger. So uh, I look for Max to really make an impact at two this year for us. He's going to be a force to, to deal with. And uh, again, Pablo and Max and doubles will be fun to watch too. A lot of fireworks there. Right. All right. Well, how about uh, Vincent Herrera? Uh, Vicente uh, is uh, one of our new players too. Vicente has a strong game. He hits the ball hard too. Uh, been working on uh, building up the forehand for him there. He's got a great backhand. I think he loves hitting backhand shots. Uh, an aggressive player. So, you know, we're trying to work with the aggression, which is what we need, along with the consistency and placement shot selection. Mm -hmm. You know, again, choosing the right shot at the right time. Uh, I look forward to seeing him on the court, doubles or singles. Uh, he uh, works well in either type of situation, and uh, he'll be a big part of our team this year. All right, two freshman newcomers, and David Bennett and Braden Williams, tell us about the uh, Dave, Dave's a big guy too. He loves to play. Uh, you know, when we hit against, you know, he's always he's a, he's a true competitor. The guy will not quit. So uh, he's developing his game. He's got a huge serve. Uh, when he pops that forehand, you know, it, it's strong, very very strong. So. Uh, he's got no lack of power in his game there. But he's also got good touch. You know, uh, he does that well, too. The key now is to work on consistency and choosing the right shot at the right time. And, and he's in the right environment with the players, as his teammates that are, you know, uh, ahead of him in class. He's got the experience hitting, of hitting with them. Right. You know, and they'll kind of, you know, show him what they're doing to help develop that game. But... You know, he's going to be a strong player, too. And uh, uh, Braden Williams is, again, one of our new players there. Uh, he has certainly raised his level of play. He's got firepower. Uh, we're working on, uh, again, developing consistency. Uh, backhand shots for him. Uh, he's going to be a, a future player for us, a player that we're going to look forward to seeing in our matches. And uh, I'm you know, very pleased to have him on board with us. All right. Well, Coach, thanks for your time today. Thank you. There you have it from men's tennis and women's tennis head coach Erskine Ratchford giving us an outlook on what the spring season is going to look like for the IU East tennis teams this spring. Well, that wraps up this episode of Inside IU East Sports. I'm your host, Caleb Gillock. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Okay.